So yeah, this is the uh, future gaming show of the four shows that are that happened today. This is the one that I know nothing about. <laughs> no, I so, don't know anything about this one either. I don't know what the show, and <laughs> I don't know who's hosting. So I guess we're gonna find out. All right, here we go. Wonder how many repeats of stuff we've already seen. We're at least going to see a couple. I, I would feel I, I feel comfortable saying that we would see a, at least a couple. Intended for mature audiences. Ooh, yeah, spicy. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna give him a clap for that. This stream is very, very loud. Oh, is it? I clicked over to see if I could see. Oh, I have it still muted. I did some Googling, so I wanted to see if it had anything. So this is Games Radar? Yeah. World premiere. Okay, world premiere. Right out the back. You didn't do the voice, Kidley. Uh, she did the voice. <laughs> Treadmill Media? Is it Treadmill or Team Kill? Oh, did I misread it? I may have. I could have too. Okay. This feels a little like alien isolation-ish with the little hand thing. Prey. PS5. Have we not seen this? It was Team Kill. Oh my gosh. 2020. Summer 2020. has a little bit of a, yeah, prey. That'd be something if this show would announce a new prey. Quantum Air, no. But I mean, didn't it kind of have a little bit of a yeah. prey feeling to it? Yeah, I can see that. Quantum Air. Interesting. It's a pretty game. Uh, keep that counter going. It's a pretty looking game. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Future Games Show. Oh, Nolan no North. Start, I was just going to say, I oh, am Nolan North, and many of you may know me as your ghost. From Destiny, yeah. or perhaps Dr. Edward Richthofen from the Call of Duty series, or even, you know, the Penguin from the Arkham series. Oh my gosh. Okay, Nolan, we get it. We get it. You've done a million hundred gazillion games. We got it. Right, right. Of course, most of you know me as Nathan Drake from Uncharted, where you probably recognize that voice. I'm so happy to be working alongside her again as we host this showcase Aww. of upcoming games. Please give it up. And welcome, the lovely and talented Miss Emily Rose. Hey, Nolan. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome from my home to yours. I'm really excited about what we have in store for you today. She's using a key light, you can tell by the ring in her Xbox eyes. Xbox Series X draw near. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking to leading game developers to see what we really can expect from the future of games. Plus, we have a host of exclusive game reveals, uh, world premieres, mm -hmm. uh, new gameplay demos from current and next-gen consoles. Uh, and some of these are so secret, even I haven't been told about them yet. Wait, they didn't tell you about them? What, they told you? No, like they really didn't tell you about them? I think people are playing favorites. Because, I mean, I have the whole I have the whole list right in front of me right there. <laughs> Whatever. Send them to me. Uh, let, and let's get into the good stuff. Okay, so the <laughs> next title is from Red Thread Games. They're this little indie studio in Norway. God, I love, I love Norway. You might know them from their Choice and Consequence series, Dreamfall Chapters. Oh, so get ready yes. The world exclusive premiere of their new project. Oh, I hope they do something like that. World premiere. Is 
Shell shading art style. One, two, three, four! Yep. Somewhere in America. Very nice. <laughs> Is that supposed to be like a Greyhound bus? Only it's not a Greyhound bus. It's a <laughs> Puma. She's got a baseball bat. That's cool. Okay, but we have a little flying robot, so that means we're in the future, at least some. And we have a robot driver, so... All those things go together. Dustborn. Okay, the music on that trailer was awesome. <laughs> hey, my name is Ragnar Tornquist. I'm creative Not director at Retro of Games. Little quality. And working on a game called Dustborn. <laughs> Dustborn is a story-driven action adventure about a band of misfits and outcasts on a road trip across America. It's a game about hope, friendship, love, robots, and the power of words. So in this footage, you're watching our main character, Pax, explore a small commune in the Pacific Northwest. She's come here with her crew to recruit her sister. But it turns out her sister's not interested in joining the crew. So your job is to convince her and deal with the consequences of what happens next. Does she have like force powers? The spawns coming to PC and next generation. That's what it looks like. Boy, he didn't explain anything right there. Thanks again to Ragnar for that exclusive first look at Dustborn. Okay, what's next, Nolan? Next, we've got a hardcore first-person platformer whose recent Steam demo was played over 100,000 times. Here's an exclusive look at a new cyberspace level containing new enemies and abilities from Ghost Runner. Oh, I was gonna say this looks really familiar. Okay. Exclusive. Tron? You versus Tron? Speed and mobility are your like greatest assets. Mirror's to Edge on Overdrive. Yep, that's how I was thinking. Ghost Runner is coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC later this year. All right, we're flipping back in time to the 1930s now with a game that stole the show at the recent Xbox Series X showcase. Here's Tatiana Delgado to reveal more about Call of the Sea's spectacular first trailer. Which one is this? Call of the Sea exclusive. Hmm. Oh, Harry. What have you done? This looks vaguely familiar. Hello. I'm Tatiana Delgado from Auto the Blue Games, working on Call of the Sea. 
You might have seen our reveal trailer during the recent Xbox Series X event, but we wanted to take the opportunity to walk you through it and tell you a bit more about the game. How strange that your trail ends here. Call of the Sea is a first-person adventure puzzle game set in the 1930s that takes puzzle place game. in the far reaches of the South Pacific. You take the role of Nora, a woman who has crossed an ocean in search of her husband's missing expedition. At Out of the Blue, we love telling stories and designing puzzles. That is why we wanted to create a game that had a strong presence of both. And also, we always approach our games with the player's emotions in mind. That being said, although Call of the Sea is a puzzle game, I would say that it is the narrative that drives the game. Therefore, puzzles serve the narrative and make the story advance as a reward when solving them. Um. Some of the puzzles we have to do with Expedition itself, using the real-world technology of the era. In others, you will try to decipher what the ancient runes were for. And going back to the story, we have the good fortune of having actress Cece Jones as the voice of Nora. We adore her acting in Firewatch and her ability to create a strong oh, presence with yeah. only her voice. It is a tale of self-discovery. Okay, this has already rung my bell. Of island, yeah. But of the character's inner self. Although our game was inspired to an extent by the works of H.P. Lovecraft, mm -hmm. this is not a horror game, but an adventure game. We hope to give you a vivid mystery and at the same time an emotional journey. Thank you for your time and we look forward to revealing more of Call of the Sea in the coming months. That looked good. Yeah. Call of the Sea is developed by Out of the Blue and will launch on Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Windows platforms. Our next game features none other Ooh, than that's Sherlock an Xbox Holmes. Exclusive, then. This time, he's a youthful, more arrogant version of the famous detective. Here's the producer and community manager from Frogwares to tell us more about the game's setting and how they plan to create a truly open world detective game. What one was this? I don't think he said a name. This is the title. Exclusive. Hi everyone, my name is Sergei Ganisian and I'm the producer and community manager at Frogwares. We are an 80 people strong independent studio from Kyiv, Ukraine. You may know us for our detective games, such as the Sherlock Holmes adventures, as well as the recent The Sinking City. Oh, he did the Sinking City. We are working on our new game, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. It's a story-driven investigation thriller in which you play as the young 21-year-old Sherlock before he becomes the legend that we all know. For John Watson and Jim Moriarty, Sherlock was a brilliant but rebellious aspiring detective trying to prove himself. The game takes place in the late 19th century on a small Mediterranean island where, according to our story, Sherlock grew up before moving to England and to where he comes back, now as an outsider, to investigate the mysterious death of his mother, the death that scarred his childhood. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is an open-world detective game with minimum hand-holding. In this game we are introducing the concept of global investigation gameplay that is heavily based on the feedback that we received from the players on our previous games. We build it on bringing in numerous detective features and mechanics that not only synergize with one another, but also allow you to interact with the world around you. For example, you can now decide to involve random people on the streets in your investigation, ask them for directions, or question those citizens who you think match your suspect profile. And if you doubt they would even talk to some foreigner like you, you can for instance find the right disguise, say police uniform to loosen their tone. It's up to you to discover that synergy and use it at the right time, because as I mentioned, there is minimum hand-holding in the game. Of course, making the right deductions and tracking down criminals is another exciting part of a detective's job. We are aiming to give the player the chance to miss a piece of evidence, pursue their own lead, and eventually let a killer walk free. Those who oh. played our Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments will know what I'm talking about. We are bringing Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 to PC and console sometime in 2021. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the show. There are some fantastic games here that we cannot wait to play ourselves. Hmm. That looked pretty cool. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is coming to PC, current and next-gen consoles. Yeah, I want to know how much they had to pay Nolan North to do in this. In our next part of the show, the future game show goes retro with a series of games that reimagine the arcade and console classics of some of my favorite eras, the 80s and 90s. And what better way to begin than with a bullet hell shoot 'em up created by a small team from Lebanon. 
including a former Pixar artist. Here's an exclusive gameplay slice of Signy. Exclusive. Hmm. What's going on here? We're a pilot? But he said this is a bullet hill. So is this like a ship game? I missed that part. Well, there's a big ship. That looks like the flying aircraft carrier from the Avengers. Oh, that's neat. I'm confused, but... Oh my god, it's Galactica. Yeah. Space Invader. Yep. Visually, it looks, it looks really impressive. It is. It is super cool. Oh my gosh, I might actually get my husband to play something. Yeah, you can probably change, change your firing modes. Missiles. I haven't played a game like this in a long time. But this one looks really neat. Oh my gosh, did you see that? Where you had to like stay in the lasers? Yeah. I, yeah. My husband says he can't play modern games because they're too, too complicated for him. Maybe he could do this one. I don't know. Okay, that laser beam sound sounded just like the Reapers. Nice. Signy? Is that what it was called? Yeah, that... Okay, there we go. Signy. Yeah. Signy is coming to Windows, Mac, and the developers hope next generation consoles. Okay, so we're keeping the arcade vibes coming with a high-speed tribute a to retro. arcade racing classics like Daytona USA and a stylish platformer that looks like a noir comic book. But first... World premiere. Cuts the flesh. The mind will fall. Slay the seven. Save us all. Fulfill what others failed to do. Mornia depends on you. Okay, I don't even want to know what that was. Bless you, Striver. Exclusive. Yeah, this is old school arcade. Mm -hmm. Hot Shot Racing. Oh, that was on Xbox, too. Okay, we've seen something from Mo M Modus already, right? Yeah. 
Chris Tales is our oh, indie love letter to oh, JRPGs. So far, we've shown a small portion of the game's overall content and the ways that you'll be able to learn from the past, act in the present, and rewrite the future. Was this all in real time on one screen? It's the one that you said looked this like Saturday morning TV. You see yeah. the impact of your choices instantly, and to get really creative in combat by combining skills and playing with time. Speaking of combat, okay, this just is clearly turn-based, right? Wilhelm, the Looks that way. Mage, in a mini coliseum mode that features we a didn't see that part before challenging though. battles uh -uh. we're really excited to be bringing chris tales both to next gen consoles and all current consoles later this year november 17th chris tales is cool but it doesn't look like my speed Pretty sure this game was also shown earlier today. I don't think I saw it, so maybe it was the one you watched. I fix computers. My See, it, yeah, it's like comic bookie style what I do game. That's cool. Wait, don't tell me you're with them. I do enjoy games that do things different, that try something different, Evil so it's nice to look at. What's next? Chemtrails? Now it's our time to be heard. Liberated. Join the Liberated. Revolution. Mother. Where the hell did they drop me? And finally, we're delighted to announce the release date for Neon Abyss, a frantic action platformer which fuses classic visuals to an ingenious roguelike dungeon system. Its publisher, Team 17, has encapsulated the spirit of independent games for over 30 years, with titles including Worms, Overcooked, The Escapist, and a whole lot more. Overcooked. Exclusive. Rated T for Teen. See, I, I like the format of this show so much better. I agree with you. <laughs> All the little goofs and everything in the PC gaming show were, were great, but this is just really snappy. And it took, it made things go a little bit longer. Like it took way longer that way. Give me some stuff quick, you know. Give this me is, an idea what the game is, is like and then let me go look it up. You yeah. know, or give me something later, like on your YouTube channel or something, so I can go and do some more research. That's what I like. Okay, you you can fish like Stardew Valley. So it's like Stardew Valley meets Contra. <laughs> I don't think my daughter would do this part. She loves Stardew Valley, but the dungeon crawling is not her favorite part of it. Oh my gosh, there's even a boss fight. Neon Abyss. It's a neat name. That's interesting. It's like... Neon Abyss will be launching on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows I feel like I needed to know more about that game. Yeah. Our Before next game has been in early access since 2018 I'm with an almost 90% very positive reviews on Steam. Here's an exclusive look at the new Easy Day Academy High School level in skateboarding sim, Skater XL. Skater XL. Exclusive. Didn't realize we were doing skateboarding sims. Academy? Or academies. <laughs> This is totally my uh, 12 year old jam right here. Hi, my name is Dane. I'm the director at Easy Day Studios and we're working on Skater XL. Today we're showing a first look at the Easy Day High School level. 
This is a new environment we've been working on for some time and we're excited to show it off today. He has skate or something. Tony Hawk, this level is skate based on something that's something. really key to skateboarding, which is the California school environment. This is something that's been in countless skate videos over the years, elementary schools, high schools, very common sort of area, um, type of terrain for, for skateboarding. One thing we learned in starting to build environments for Skater XL is that we have a very unique game mechanic, so we had to go back to the drawing board on how the levels were designed. The pieces of the level are combinations of elements that we've designed ourselves, but also we mix in countless real world spots. There's probably about 25 real skate spots, um, some that are very recognizable to anyone in skateboarding, from real Boarding. high schools, from real, real elementary school. schools. The sticks we've are got your Wallenberg, we've got, we've got Clipper, we've got um, parts of Lockwood Elementary, just a lot of different places. Uh, again, these are historic pieces. If you know skating, you probably know a bunch of these spots. And uh, the interesting thing is, again, based on the, the game mechanic itself, we've actually massaged and tweaked each of these spots um, to be not just recognizable, massaged. but also really fun and, and work with the game mechanic as well. I'm flying out to unknown settings. The unique thing about Skater XL is it really starts with the controls. The joysticks, the analog sticks on the gamepad, um, map directly to the feet. So you have independent control of each of the foot and everything is completely physics-based and huh. generated uh, in the moment. That's interesting. So what this leads to is, uh, you know, kind of a, a first for skateboarding games in general is that, you know, the gameplay is not driven by animations, it's driven by the physics. We didn't actually program tricks into the game, we just programmed movement. And with that movement, you're able to do all kinds of tricks. So as you build up your skill, you're also building up your ability to articulate and perform those tricks in different ways. Uh, uh, ooh, ow, that was a big ow. Into it. And that's really where the, the satisfaction, the fun of this game comes, that you're really directly in control. I mean, these must really be skateboarders You know, just like real skateboarding, there's game. such a depth in, in the ways that you can use that board and how you can develop your skills. It becomes a very personal thing. And uh, in the real world, that leads to all these other things that, that pop up around skateboarding, you know, the culture and the creative side and um, the community. And, and that's something very unique to skateboarding you don't see with, with other things. So, you know, our goal has really been to capture a lot of those elements and, and bring them into the game as well. The interesting thing is that it's been uh, a decade since the last uh, significant entrant into the skateboarding genre, and it hasn't been explored in you know. In, in it's interesting, like you just said, it's been a decade, and then now all of a sudden this year, there's like the four skateboarding to, games to coming out. out yeah. Platforms, so no, we're weird how really that happens. Interesting explosion of, of content, our creative community, um, and modders, and and all these different things happening um, around the core of the game. So it's really exciting to see where this could lead in the future. Skater XL is coming out onto all major platforms July 28th, and that includes Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. I bet that would be a good Switch Thanks, game. Thanks, Dane, and the whole team at Easy Day Studios. So their Our next game builds itself as Synthwave They're getting FPS, out before the Tony Hawk games, nice, I you think. Should, mm -hmm. It's already been That's a big smart. hit on Steam, and we're pleased to announce today that it's now coming to Xbox One. This is GTTOD. Get to the orange door. Exclusive. We have arrived. What is this game? a Tron first person shooter. Let's see, which of our categories do we add this to? Retro shooter? That we've seen like a million of? Oh my god, the, I don't know. It's got some. It, it almost also feels like a survival, like. Um, swimming but is it just like um, um get to the you know death garden or wherever you have to try and extract like is that pleased to announce that a new demo is available right now free to download on steam
Okay, Nolan, come on, you're dying here. What are you talking about? I'm not that bad. No, no, I mean you're gonna be dying when you play our next game. A third person action adventure, get this, it's set within a coma where you explore your memories while fighting for your life. Okay, I'm confused. I think I need to see the trailer. All right, glad you asked. Okay, you guys could have that just a little bit. Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, this game is pretty, and it looks cool. I'm confused, but look at how pretty that game is. Yeah. Okay. Well... <laughs> Waking it's supposed is to be a walking and Oh, it's waking. Oh my god, I can't read. <laughs> Who wants an exclusive premiere? Well, I'm not really asking here. This is actually is that happening. An environmental Our puzzle, next game is like, a sequel to the critically acclaimed World game? War II flying sim Bomber Crew, which boldly goes as close as its licensing team allows into a new era. You get it. World premiere. For too long, the Phasmids have been causing trouble in our peaceful little corner of space. But not any longer. Gina, let's go full Abrams with the flares. Enlist today to embark on an epic space adventure and do your part. Ooh, let's get some of those cool wipey things in this part, Gina. <laughs> Join us on Athena Station. Experience the rush of space flight. Seek out new life. And make new friends along. Ah! And make new friends. Okay, that looked like that had my name and, and they killed him off. Friends along the way. Live, laugh, and prosper. And may the force ah! join the space crew. Gina, a little let's bit like FTL. and get some explosions going on here. And it with a bang. Sounds a little bit like Garrus. Space Crew is published by yeah, Curve Digital and will launch on PC, Xbox One, PS4, uh, and Switch in late 2020. It's possible. Hey, I Nolan, just missed the last I got a part. good question for you. You ready? What is scarier than clowns? Uh, nothing is scarier than clowns. You know that. Well, you wouldn't say that if you'd been to Wales. You should probably cover your eyes for this. Okay. Exclusive. Get ready for some jump scares, chat. Oh, These are God. I wish to write. I fear you may believe me taken with madness. My father seeks okay, to Okay, it's on me. a train. He wishes me to see bad right there. She did. To become the star attraction that will draw good folk to this accursed spit of land. I cannot explain further, but ask that you trust me. Your love, always, Elizabeth. Hello. My name is Ben Tester, and I'm head of marketing at Wales Interactive. Right now, we're finishing work on a new title, Made of Scare, and we're really excited to be able to share with you this new and exclusive gameplay footage. Also, the audio in this stream is all over the place. What do you mean? Made of Scare is a first-person survival quiet horror game. Yeah, I'm which constantly having to manually adjust. by Welsh folklore. It fuses psychological, gothic, and British horror. Set in 1898, Made of Scare is inspired horror? by the haunting Welsh tale of Elizabeth Williams. It's a story of a family empire that's driven by torture, slavery, piracy, and a supernatural mystery that suffocates the grounds of the hotel. In this footage, we wanted to explore the 3D sound-based AI system that is the core survival mechanic. We want to show you what you can do to remain undetected, and if you're caught, what tools are available for you to survive. 
The enemies at Scare Hotel are completely blind, and they hunt by only what they can hear. So any noise that you make from walking or running, bumping into environmental okay. objects, Alien, uh, or even breathing isolation. heavily, will uh, often result in death. So you can avoid detection by creeping, I was gonna avoiding make the, the obstacles clicker that reference. make the noise. But if the enemies are oh, close, yeah. then holding your breath is the only option. If you mistime this and run out of breath, then even your panting will get you killed. You are not completely defenseless. There'll be a sound-based weapon available with limited ammo that's hidden in and around the grounds of the hotel. You'll have to find health items, collectibles, puzzle pieces, map pieces, and story pickups, all items that you can find and add to your inventory. The game will feature three levels of difficulty. The scares remain the same throughout, but a change in AI behavior, enemy strength, limited manual saves, and reduced ammo and health items will put more of an emphasis on that classic survival horror experience. Mm, mm, mm. Made of Scare is coming to PC and console with a digital and physical launch on PS4 and Xbox One this July. You can wishlist the game now on Steam and pre-purchase will be available again, in the coming wishlist. weeks. Thank you for joining wishlist. us and we hope you enjoy the show. Oh, 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 right at the end, really? Hey, Nolan, you can open your eyes now. Okay, there you go. All right, Made of Scare launches on PS4, Xbox, Switch, and Windows in 2020. Hey, Em, what's better than looking at one upcoming game? Is this another one of your dad jokes? It's looking at a collection of upcoming games in the space of a few minutes. Okay, I'm no listening. One is Here's an incredible lineup jokes. of future hits to get excited. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, Cyberpunk. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 16-bit cyberpunk. <laughs> Gaming montage. <laughs> oh, oh what? What? <laughs> Playing the uh, squid monster. My God. <laughs> that looks cute. Right there, Cyberpunk, 16 bit. I like that combat. Dog gone. This is so to go along we with got a dog game, game and we got a cat game. Cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just would be happy. Oh, oh here's that farting game. <laughs> what the deuce? Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on, chat. I can... Hide our cameras for a second. Cloudpunk? This game's already out. I hear it's really good. Oh, yeah? Another cyberpunk game? Ah, uh, another cyberpunk game. Some kind of sports game? These are going past too fast. I can't write them down. Stage hands. I have no idea what that game is. Yeah. Arcage, huh? Oh, Arcage. Yeah, I, they tried to hang on to one of them. I guess when the studio went under, I think it was this one, right? And you can find out more information about all those titles by heading to gamesradar.com. Our next game appeared in our sister event, the PC Gaming Show, just a few hours ago. And we're delighted to have John Pearl join us now for an exclusive look at Remnant from the Ashes DLC, subject 2923. <laughs> That's funny. Exclusive.
Hello, I'm John Pearl, the design director at Gunfire Games. Right now, the team is hard at work on Subject 2923, the final DLC for Remnant from the Ashes. This DLC is much larger and more expansive than any of the previous content we've released. I've heard this is a pretty good multiplayer game. This yeah. DLC will introduce it's a brand new campaign that takes place a year after the events co -op of the base campaign uh, of Remnant. This campaign focuses on the origin of the Dreamer like project as in, and how it connects to the Roots invasion on Earth. Yeah. With the footage we're showing, like, we're giving you all a like sneak peek campaign co -op and icy and unforgiving or... of the new explorable world of Resum. Okay. The inhabitants of the world are an entirely yeah, there's no new PvP, faction of enemies, the Uriki, think. which are a race of menacing human like, bats. In no, like, special mode for co-op. You can just play, like, like Borderlands for talking co-op, right? I, I think so, yeah. This DLC has a lot of additional content. With the addition of the new campaign comes all new quests, bosses, weapons, trinkets, armor sets, and more. Additionally, Recent will be added as an option in Adventure Mode. And if you have the Swamp This game's already DLC, up, by the way, chat. Yeah. It'll add Recent to the rotation Ooh. of Survival Mode as well. Oh wait, they're showing us. Oh, never mind. DLC is I just saw in the PC, corner. It's like pre-launch footage. Like, oh, pre-launch and like expansion. Yeah, or, yeah. Can't wait for everyone to play it. Thank you so much for tuning in to find out what's next for Remnant from the Ashes. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the future game show. All right, so Remnant from the Ashes, subject 2923, will launch on Xbox One, PS4, subject. and Windows PC. And now for something completely different. Monty Python reference there. Exclusive. Everybody loves playing board games. Now oh. they're finally cool. But they're not so easy to play when you can't meet up with your friends or loved ones. Don't fret, my old chums. Here at Thunderbox HQ, we've been working tirelessly to create state-of-the-art AI, amazing computer graphics, a bitching synth soundtrack, <laughs> and our laser-powered but totally harmless board game zapping digitizer. Also, we can bring you the retro sci-fi survival strategy we like to call The Captain is Dead. <laughs> Let me just load it up for you. Oh my god, there are aliens all over the ship. Come on, open up. Wow, this looks kind of dangerous. Good. Okay, I like the art style. I like the goofy whimsy. Get your goddamn dirty tentacles off of yeah, my again, spaceship. To me, this looks like another FPL style game. Operating at 100%. Skill assimilated. People are just taking the idea of FTL and taking it to the next level. And I'm done. Taking charge. I haven't used one of these since 3086. <laughs> I'm still right. Those aliens picked the wrong ship to mess with. The captain is dead. Head on over right now to Steam right now to wish list it up right now. <laughs> the captain is dead. Is okay, that one gave me a little chuckle. Launch on Steam in 2020. Okay, so our next games, they're linked by their focus on player creativity. From designing a food-themed obstacle course for you and your friends, to creating a mobile base that traverses a savage land. But let's start with a title called Main Assembly. Hello inventors, and welcome to Main Assembly. A game that gives you the freedom to create anything you can imagine. With huge open sandboxes to explore, your creations will be pushed to the breaking point. Jam packed with loads of challenges and parts to unlock, pushing your inventions to the limit. Revolutionary freeform crafting lets you construct anything with ease and precision. Once you have perfected your design, why not take it for a test flight? 
Happy with how your robot looks? With the visual programming interface, you can set up controls and use sensors to make logic for different types of automation and really So put now your after to Dreams work. comes or out, now we've got all these games where you can completely manipulate Show your stuff in the, the game. to the world and test out what others in the community have Which built cool. in the workshop. Will your creation be the one that everyone is talking about? Main Assembly is out now in early access. See you there, inventors. Oh, here's that game again. Yep. Hello, my name's Jamie Jackson and I'm from Mythical Games. And today we're super excited to give you an in-depth look at our new games, Blanco's Block Party. We're a new studio created by a bunch of veterans who helped create some of the world's biggest game franchises, including Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Skylanders, DJ Hero, Guitar oh, Hero, there's and the Minecraft Skylanders. Story Mode. Blanco's Block Party is a game about vinyl toys coming to life, but it's actually more than just a game. It's a place for gamers and content creators and collectors to come together and to build and to own and to set the rules for the worlds that they want to play. So here we can see one of our Blancos running around the junction. The junction in Blancos is a really cool place that is just the beginning of the Blancos world that is gonna grow over time. Um, you go there as a solo player, it's going to be full of other players. Whenever you're jumping like that, I just want to hear... It's going to be full of bidip, pigs bidip, bidip. and dares that our <laughs> NPCs are going to set for you. And he picked up a coin. Um, as you do these things in the junction, you're going to level up your Blanco. So you're going to be able to train them to do different things. So each Blanco that you own, not only do you own it, you get to train it and to be the type Man, of Man, I want a donut. Be, so you could make it super fast and jumpy. You could make it super tough for some of the shooter games. You some more pizza would be nice. You could for some of the race games. You're also going to be able to get these really cool rewards from requests. Um, some of those things might be things that you can attach to your Blanco that just look cool. Some of them will actually enhance a lot of your abilities. But the junction is just the beginning and it's going to grow and get bigger and bigger over time. Now what we're seeing is some of the UGC content. So everything here- I'm a little bit curious as to uh, what the audience they're trying editor. to target with this. We wanted it to be super mm -hmm. easy for players to build and create these levels. Key to it is everything can be done with a game controller. In Blanco's Block Party, you're gonna be getting new content season. Kind of, I'm what telling you, it's kind of like they're combining Minecraft really cool and Skylander. For that season. So if you go and buy a blank you can change everything. One, You've got all this stuff in the thing, but then two. you could bring in. So the... if you manage to snag one of the cool ones, you're going to be one of the few that gets you to keep bring that in the thing. for as long as you they want keep to keep talking it. about dolls. Same I don't know if they're the theirs and the quests. Those are going to be if locked. You can buy them outside or no, but completing those things only is available in that season. Ownership is a key part of the experience. So our proprietary technology platform provides true ownership of what players buy and create through verifiable assets. It allows us to legitimize the type of game. And maybe some Animal Crossing because so you can create and things in game. It gives players the power to dictate the value of those assets. And the key thing is, is you as a player own it, and we're going to make it really easy for you to do what you want with that. Hmm. Players can create the world that they want in Blancos. We've just provided really easy tools so that you can build whatever world you that want. That is a pretty neat like, the rules terrain system the or building really system. Is kind mm -hmm. of your imagination. Blanco's Block Party is coming to PC later this year and we will be announcing more news around additional platforms and our beta soon. If you want to know more about it, head over, reserve your account at blancos.com and you can also follow us on Twitter at PlayBlancos and Instagram at PlayBlancos. Thank you and enjoy the show. <laughs> Exclusive. Starhawk Ranger said, I'm thinking preteen. Yeah. Perhaps. But then again, I thought that with Minecraft and all kinds of people play Minecraft, so. I don't immediately recognize this one. 
Mm-mm. Okay, I'm gonna say it. It's pretty though. Looks like it's probably another open world survival game though. Hi, my name is Lucas. I'm a producer here at Donkey Crew working oh, it's on Last this Oasis. Game. And today I would like to show you oh, our new map. Last Oasis is a nomadic survival Oasis. MMO okay. combining as soon as I saw the crawler things that allow I players to traverse the world on complex wooden machines, engage in it epic an battles both game. against the fauna and against each other, leave a mark on the player-driven economy. Is this out already? More exciting yep. things in Not familiar game. with it. It might be early access. What we're showing yeah. here today is the next big addition to the game, a volcanic oasis. This upcoming type of a map consists I'm of all you, this new just looks to like Mad Max from me. cold and barren fields stretching all the way to the horizon to hardened volcanic rock formations that, that creates natural thing passages with the desert and lava 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 thing. obliterating anything that gets near. As you travel through these vast virgin terrains, you get a chance to discover efficient ways to mine obsidian and find rare loot in mysterious man-made stone runes, and even hunt legendary killings, these giant winged lizards inhabiting mountains in hot climates. Harsh conditions of the volcanic lands make it very difficult for nomads to survive if they decide to settle on this hot soil. Greenery and sources of water are hard to come by, and hostile fly monsters don't make it any easier to explore because they are attracted to walker winds, making it essential for anyone who decides to venture towards these new territories to prepare in advance. Smart traders will likely take advantage of the resource scarcity to try to make some flots on desperate nomads missing some wood or water, while explorers will be risking their lives to gather rare resources that appear in high quantities So is quantities this like an economic game too? Conditions. We are working tirelessly mm, maybe a little to bring in more content and improvements for the game. But, so make sure to try last you know, all these games are now on Steam. Really similar in their aspects. It's like where you, you load into the game, you have nothing, and then you have to build, you know, everything right. that you want and next level up. up and, the future game show talks to industry experts about you know, how like next gen arc. consoles and PC technology are changing the way we play. But without we dinosaurs. Hope you enjoy our special investigation into the future of gaming. And for the record, we called it that first. It's Unreal Engine 5. That Ke Kena? Oh, yeah. Cyberpunk. And that space game. Remember that space game that we saw? Yeah, there was Ghost of Tsushima there. Assassin's Creed. Valhalla. Last of Us. Last of Us. Horizon. It's time to see yeah. what's next. That's the demo again. <laughs> A new generation of gaming is upon us. With home consoles such as Sony's PlayStation 5 and Microsoft Xbox Series X set to release in late 2020, developers are preparing okay, the to memes change about the way PlayStation we play 5 are hysterical. We see companies like Google yeah. Stadia continuing to push the boundaries of cloud gaming technology, while studios like Epic Games are beginning to show There's us what a new generation of engines will be capable of delivering. The future game show has caught up with some of the world's leading developers. Yeah, that uh, Unreal graphics, 5 audio, demo they showed. Storytelling and machine mm -hmm. learning to discover I how the much next generation guarantee of people that it, that's, video it'll games be a in game a way at some that point because that's happened so many before. times where they're like here's a demo and then it ends up being a game later on mm -hmm. the way that i see game worlds changing in the next generation is with a bigger focus on player interaction and making the worlds feel truly alive we can already make game worlds that are almost too big for the amount of content i think it was actually confirmed in the last so, couple of days of that uh, hellblade 2 is going to be on world, Unreal 5. it's the complexity diversity and the freedom to play around uh world. yeah i i, I thought, thought they had said speed. something like that the prior technology to that really excites me is using machine learning both to make the game feel a lot more responsive we're gonna make pac-man and on real fire and yeah, no, no, no. I think they did say something about that, wasn't it? Was yeah. it when Xbox came back after the whole Unreal 5 demo where they were like, oh, you know, PlayStation, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you know, yada, yada. I thought they said Hellblade 5 was good. Or Ninja Theory is using that to make their next game or whatever. What I'm super interested in is solving problems that help game worlds and the characters in them play and feel as alive as they can now look. The next generation of tools and technology should allow a game to really acknowledge the emergent, creative things you can do as a player, and to help game developers create richer, more soulful game worlds. 
I'm really excited about using technologies like Semantic ML to help game characters feel more responsive and alive, to get the game to create content not just randomly, but based on the kinds of things you've done as a player so far. One way that game worlds might feel more alive in the future Whoa. is by replacing scripted interactions with this organic conversations. This live demo from Russian AI get loud project again? Live Mind literally puts words into Geralt's mouth and could be a sign of things to come. Do you remember Beckingwood Derby? Yes, I won a great saddle for racing then. What? <laughs> Leave Geralt alone. Of course, it isn't just game worlds that will evolve in the next generation, but the types of stories being told within them too. Narrative is such an important component to the games we play, furthering our connection with virtual spaces and the characters that inhabit them. It makes sense then that this is one area developers are eager to evolve. Are you getting Ghost of Tsushima? Mm -hmm. a computer with 1K on Why? Oh, I was just wondering. Obviously, 40 years later, so much. Yeah, we got Last of Us on Friday, and then in Ghost of Tsushima's what still two, three weeks after that. Goal. The mm -hmm. biggest benefit of games as a storytelling medium is the interaction. I'm just not but sure who's buying it, me or my oldest. The players, instead of truly <laughs> letting them be a part of it. The future of interactive storytelling should be about how we can make the experience as frictionless as possible. Really making the player feel like they are actually part of the story. Um, Ooh. You know, tailored experiences that they can do not only by themselves, but also with friends at home or online. I'm also hoping to see storytelling explore more collaborative efforts, telling stories to larger groups of players at once without telling each of them that only they are the chosen one. When we start thinking to ourselves, is traversal what should be at the heart of every storytelling experience in AAA? You know, can we make it more about the internal conflicts rather than Ooh, those external see, I never got running, to, I never got around to playing that game. Neither did I. I, I, I was going to never have Halloween. to cut away to load the next scene or more next assets. Halloween. If there's a cut to black, it's only because the director wanted that cut in that exact moment. And storytelling goes well beyond just the words being said. It's the audio and the camera shot and effects and the location. Now with characters and the world looking more real than ever, less downtime due to loading and more feedback from our controllers, we'll hopefully see larger or more immersive scenes that won't need to let up just because the hardware requires it. A new generation of hardware means we are about to encounter a new frontier for graphical fidelity and visual oh, effects. That's a give given. It to me now. But what about game audio? Sony and Microsoft are putting more emphasis than ever before on audio. And in the way that sound can draw us in game worlds like never before, could our sense of immersion in virtual spaces be about oh, to change? Oh, Last of Us 2, I think it's going to. The next uh, generation uh, will definitely be recorded. Ah, uh, yes. Are you playing it? Oh, yeah. You said you were kind of. You said you had some uh, we already started words about the first already, one, so uh, I wasn't sure if you were going to play it. No, first one was amazing. And the Sonics Wasn't are it? being rediscovered, it and people are starting to think in different ways of how we could even push the boundaries even further. So one of the things that's so exciting about the next the, gen audio like, is the that couple it's of small issues that I had with Last of Us One. It seems like the PS5 3D the audio, audio like everybody has. is kind of the most mm -hmm. outspoken example of. And this. like I told you, I so wasn't with a that good new person to have an opinion about it because I was playing it on. Player player I played it on PlayStation Three. That, that's oh. very special. I have the remaster for PS4, but I started playing with my daughter on PlayStation Three. Um, well, and we just finished it, it on a PlayStation 3, so... Of course, some of the biggest changes to play you won't be able to see. From smaller teams being given the tools to more easily achieve their creative ambitions, the expansion of services such as cross-platform play and cloud gaming, to a huge reduction in load times and install sizes. Here's just some of the reasons developers are excited now, about the changes really the on the is that really the reason why we don't have cross play? Playing games of the next generation because we don't have PlayStation 5. With all uh -huh. the online services bound to get a refresh, I definitely feel like I the next generation will have more opportunities to play together when we can't be together. I think the future of mobile gaming is really about two things. The first is about ubiquity. The second part of mobile gaming in the future is going to be about sociability. People are going to play games in a more and more social manner. And it'll be strange in the future if you find someone that's actually It'd be really game, nice if people would put more games on mobile that I want to play. Crossplay is becoming more widely accepted and implemented. And that means you shouldn't have to coordinate what SKU you're getting with your friends, what version they're getting, what platform they're on, you should be able to seamlessly play together, which is amazing. Uh, almost zero load times, cross-platform ownerships of games, uh, cross-platform cloud saves, and just overall the focus on the player's experience rather than the platform itself. 
The next generation of hardware should allow smaller teams to create products of a higher graphical fidelity. Is the developers will have this extraordinary opportunity to create really rich, diverse worlds at very, very high resolution. And we'll be able to come to rely on gaming. It's really interesting on Friday so much of what we couldn't on before, Twitch. How high does that directory get? I'm sure it'll be over a million. Complex animation. Or um, what this will do is the Last of Us 2? Yeah. Playing field for developers. Um, and developers who previously couldn't have competed at the high Yeah, I don't know. I'm just Tuesday. stoked. It's a really exciting time. We'd like to thank everyone who gave up their time to bring us that insight into the future of gaming. All right, our next game is introduced by a gaming legend. Thanks, Emily. You know, guys, <laughs> I... No, seriously, no? Oh, my God. Okay, no, I refer, of course, to Brian Fargo. He's the original producer of Fallout. Oh, this is He's Wasteland 3? He's here to 3? tell you about the action RPG Wastelands 3. Okay. Let's yep. take a look. Exclusive. I don't know if I'm gonna play this game. Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Fargo. I, was I didn't see him. Producer on the original Fallout and Wasteland series, and I'm here to tell you today that finally Wasteland Three is coming, August 28th, for the Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. That potion 4. thing he has in the corner. Did you see that? Ah, uh, was it the one that was glowing? Yeah. I have no idea. This. Who would murder families and children? Okay, I got to play this section right here. Oh, really? Yeah. Let's find the monsters who did this. That looks super, uh, that, that truck driving in the snow looked really familiar. Uh, yep, and I did that, uh, some, a sequence I swear that was that first one, not the second part with the big uh, crab looking thing shooting you. I got to play about 20 minutes of it. And because I'm so far with RTX games, one of the developers had to come over and help me stop. <laughs> I get destroyed. Yeah, that was funny. But for an RTX game, that game was really, Wasteland I'm gonna say it, was really pretty Xbox looking. Xbox One, PS4, Not Windows, pretty pretty, but the graphics Mac, were really good. And Linux on August 28th, 2020. Question, if clowns are a 10 on the scale meter And what? My dying is like a four? Yeah, we've been over this. Look, if clowns are like high, then our next game needs a new scoring system. Check out this new gameplay from Survival Horror Remothered. Broken porcelain. Exclusive. Remother. Rated M for mature. Please come in, Miss Reed. It's another motive. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Ashman. Do you remember me? Storm my game. Only games. between old friends. <laughs> I'm Jennifer, by the way. Lindsay, but call me Lynn. Lynn! At last. <laughs> it's just a bad dream. Where are you? Show yourself! With me, Not done? really my kind of game. <laughs> this game is really interesting. You won't do it, Mr. Ashman. Of course I will. I don't know, Broken chat. What do you point. think? Anybody, anybody want to play that? It's almost like a Japanese horror game, but not. Like, it's... Oh, 
Do you know what I mean? Like with the weird like looking yeah. like people in it, but it's like not Japanese, it's English. Like it's weird. My brain is kind of going, there's something that's not Remothered right. Remothered Broken Porcelain comes to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows in late 2020. Next up, we have a world exclusive teaser for a new title. Oh, well, for from some reason, I thought tales. they were finishing. No spoilers here, but if there's a full moon tonight, we all should stay inside. Two horror games in a row? World premiere. Yeah, this show might be an hour and a half. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Oh, full game reveal in July. At the Xbox oh, event, maybe? I can't wait to see more from this maybe. team in the coming months. So the Future Game Show has taken a closer look at the games of tomorrow, but big changes are happening to the way we play right now. Features such as cross-progression and cross-play cross allow us to... Cross-play? That sounds like you that time you tried to play Crash Bandicoot. As I was saying, new features like crossplay let PS4 owners connect with Xbox, Switch, and PC owners in their favorite shooters. And we caught up with developers High Res about how these features work in their current and upcoming games. Mm. Crossplay lets you play games with your friends, regardless of which platform they own. And it's grown in popularity thanks to titles such as Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone. Developers High Res Studios are trailblazers in this field, but the industry as a whole has been slower to embrace the potential of crossplay. We caught up with High Res to ask why and to discover the importance of crossplay as we head into the next generation. To overcome the challenges of making crossplay work, you need to change people's mindsets. There's a fear that platforms will lose revenues and lose players to competing platforms if they open the doors. I was going to say, it ain't the players that have a problem. In the future, yeah. I think you'll start to see consoles and other platforms embrace a truly play anywhere experience. It will become increasingly less important what hardware you're using to access the game and much more about like connectivity and communication. There'll still be exclusives, but the true crossover hits won't be constrained to one platform. Crossplay and cross progression also challenges game developers to think more globally and holistically about audiences. Is that you should be able to play from anywhere, doing anything, and kind of have that uh, that that follow you around as you go from console to console or platform to platform. If they choose Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo or PC for the next generation, it doesn't matter. The game they love and the purchases they make. Okay, that's will come cool. With them. Players expect the same experience yeah, I'm not sure across what game all of into platforms, a, and so into to, be able to actually pull that off takes a <laughs> reasonably high level of sophistication. Um, and you also want to ensure that kind of competition that across all these platforms is fair regardless I mean, of who they're up against. Now that a console game is a PC game, is a mobile or, game, no, it's not for many games, things like it is. cultural relativism, localization, global community management I don't even know anymore. are a bigger and bigger role I in don't gaming. Play Fortnite. Um, so I think the long answer is short. That's one of the kind of maybe hidden benefits of crossplay is it stimulates diversity and kind of a global approach to how you think oh, about it. To deliver next gen crossplay and progression like this, it takes commitment from the start. High Res Studios currently mm -hmm. publishes three crossplay and cross progression. No, I, I was wondering what the other game was summer. they were showing. We keep learning new lessons, but the single biggest is it's much easier to build a play anywhere title from the start than it is to shoehorn it later in a project. More players mm -hmm. accessing the same game rather than I've fragmenting across all of these platforms also means that your ability this to game. make matches game? and the quality of those matches starts or is this to smite? overall we're looking to drive the most fair and fun game experience we possibly that must be can and we think the cross play smite. and cross progression are the, some of the most important pillars really? to get there. what god is that isn't ready? smite all it's gods Don't worry. i have no he idea was born ready. what's up yeah, everybody i'm scott lucier I... aka scott gandhi and i'm the lead designer at first watch games Currently, we're finishing work on Rogue Company, and we're really excited to be able to share this update with you today. Rogue Company is a third-person shooter that features a unique blend between action-paced gameplay and objective-based game modes. In Rogue Company, you play as a rogue, which are a group of elite mercenaries that operate outside of the wall, and they drop in exotic locations all over the world. Rogue Company is going to be free to play, and it'll feature cross-play and cross-progression across 
all platforms. Is it just my Since imagination, one, or have we have not really heard anything sure more about Watch Dogs? The game you want on the platform no, you we want haven't. with the friends that you want. Same with the Gods and Monsters. At the end of the day, Rogue Company yep. can be summarized well, in Ubisoft one Ubisoft has an event coming inclusive. up. Today we are in the late stages of Rogue Company development. Which Beyond means good and evil. Cross -play and cross I've been waiting for that game for three years weapons, now. Weapons, rogues, and maps. The majority of my time is spent refining the core combat experience in Rogue Company while also making sure that our maps and modes are providing exciting and unique games. I do want to say, it's pretty amazing to play Rogue Company on a handheld device like the Switch. Being able to play Rogue Company at 60 FPS as I sit on the couch and my wife is watching another episode of Love Island is a dream come true. Love Island? Rogue Company is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch later this summer. We can't wait. For you that would to be play my situation just in reverse. To sign up for the alpha, head on over to RogueCompany.com. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out. Big thanks to the teams at High Res for that look into the future of crossplay and info about their upcoming titles. Now we all know the next generation consoles are getting closer. So here's an exclusive look at what's to come in Square Enix's third-person shooter, oh, this is that Outriders. Outriders. Oh, uh, yeah. Game, yeah, there's been a lot of chatter about this game. Exclusive. Next time on the Outriders broadcast, we'll be taking a look at the journey into the unknown, plus the characters joining your adventure as you battle through a hostile world. We'll also be showcasing a brand new area and delving deeper into our next class, the Pyromancer. Mm. Coming next month. You can sign up for their YouTube channel, and that's where they put those. We can't wait to hear more about Outriders and the lead up to release sometime in holiday 2020. I just want to know if they've got We're a heading good story. 150 years into the future next, where humanity is struggling so to survive and human brains are being transferred into robot bodies. Here's more on disintegration. I don't think I've heard about this one. Not what? One I told you about it further. multiple times. Disintegration. See what we've got yeah. five integrated outlaws. Sir, have you got weapons and shelter in there? Maybe this was my favorite of Pax East. The rest. We may have more of interest to you than guns. And the co-creator of Halo. Hi there. My name's Marcus Leto. I'm the president and creative director at V1 Interactive. And we are currently working on our brand new debut game called Disintegration. And we are super excited to finally uh, be uh, getting ready for it to launch soon. Wow. I thought it already launched. Look at you. Huh. You took the hard road. This was With what we saw past that we set out beginning to build of that something trailer. truly unique. Um, it blends some great parts of a first-person shooter with a real-time tactical elements in a way that's never been done before and in a way that required us to invent all new gameplay mechanics in order for it to work. The story of disintegration is uh, something that's set about 150 years from now in the future where humanity is really struggling to survive. And one means of survival is taking the human brain and actually implanting it within an armored shell mm -hmm. and attaching that to a robotic armature, allowing them to survive through this period of time. Once in these robotic armatures, humans now find themselves in a world where they are super strong, they're super durable, and some of them don't want to return back to humanity again. And so a new army is developed called the Rayon. In this world, we play some of those early integrated who are fighting back and who don't want to follow along with the Rayon. I've seen what you call freedom. Not interested. <laughs> So imagine everybody's exos from Destiny. We allow yeah. the players to team up 5v5 against one another. Each I got to play this. crew in this incredible battle the multiplayer. against one another. Each one of those uh, those matches And they've got classes, so you can be a tank or so DPS a or a healer. Bike. Victory. Yeah, it looks really in interesting. In order for the player to really have success, 
plane disintegration. Right now, I think the, uh, it's between Trump a six and a equation. seven is the average rating because they're saying the campaign is the your grab story and needs some work. Weapons and abilities that you uh, use fluidly in combat. I didn't get to play the campaign, That's so I had no opinion part about of that. The right? equation, though. On the other hand, is your ground squad. So you have these. Their unique abilities, so imagine Dragon Age party tactics gameplay. on the ground. It's important that the player okay, understands now, that now both of these that, um, in tandem together. And that yeah, we're seeing this part. I do remember. They I was talking about this. Mm -hmm. And for you to kind of consider both parts is critical for your success. So you so have to manage the people on the ground and you have to figure out what you need to do on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and Steam, well, for the PC. We're excited to be on all three Oh, and by the way, Gerb, the word you're looking for is clone, for not knockoff. Pop in and start playing with us. Um, I'm sorry. Were you two having a moment? I can leave y'all be. What? The grav cycle? I'm a pilot. Uh huh. It's called a pre flight inspection. Oh, no, that's right. I've seen this cutscene. And it was really cool because you actually went in and saw a pre video and then that cutscene and then you went out and played. And the, the, the guy who was speaking at the beginning to was explaining Xbox to you about the studio. And, and then June 16th. it was just, it was cool. I had never had that before. An alternative history. As we explore what might have happened if the Second World War didn't end in 1945. Exclusive. Hi everyone. My name is Bogdan. This might be a shocker to some people in chat. But probably 90% of games are a clone of something. It's just whether or not word. they are able to do something different and unique within the setting and genre that they're trying to, you know, work with. Developers will say they were inspired by and then in the spring of 1960, the, the Nazi regime is on its knees and Soviet troops are closing in. Without warning, the Nazis unleashed the full might of their nuclear arsenal on their homeland and Eastern Europe, stopping the Soviet offensive in its tracks and turning Europe into an uninhabitable nuclear wasteland. To the rest of the world, this seems like a final act of desperation by one of the cruelest regimes in human history. Yet few know of the secrets that have been hidden deep underground. Okay, somebody gonna get up and the say, you know, F is Nazis among the most and stuff here in a minute? Endeavors of the Third Reich. Is that what's gonna happen Its here? goal has been to construct a network of hidden, self-sustainable, heavily fortified underground bunkers meant to shelter an Aryan master race society until it can emerge and rule the post-nuclear landscape. But not everything goes according to plan. For reasons unknown, one of the bunkers, located just outside Kraków, Poland, goes dark. Now, as you discover the past, you can shape the present. It's been 20 years since the explosion that set our story in motion. You play as Szymon, a 12-year-old Polish boy driven by personal tragedy to seek out the bunker on the edge of Kraków. At first, the place seems completely desolate. What brought Szymon to the bunker? What answers is he seeking? You'll have to uncover the truth yourself. So, do you dare discover the last story on Earth? There it is again. Add to wish list. Interesting. Paradise Lost is coming to PC, PS5, it's and pretty. Xbox Series X. Our next game... Wait a second. Emily, have you crossed another thing off my script? Hey, we discussed this. You can't be trusted. Unbelievable. Okay, fine. Just roll the tape. World premiere. Whether you choose agent or choose hacker. It 
takes two to complete the mission. Pretty sure I've seen this. It takes two to stay alive. Okay, I absolutely love the throw on this stuff. Operation Tango. It takes two to save the world. I love the, the fro on that character. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it stays that way in game. <laughs> Our next game is so secret, we don't even it know is. its name yes. at the time of this recording. So I'm just going to put myself out there oh, this and game. make one up. I'm guessing it's called The Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. What kind of fake name is that? It this is might be my favorite new game that I've seen. The Kingdom of Gusty Tina, Willows. Here's called, the developers right? of The Kingdom of the Gusty Willows to talk about their show stopping new PS5 project, The Kingdom. This is also coming of the to Gusty PC Willows. this year, they've confirmed. Can I make it mm -hmm. extremely clear? This is not called The Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. What's the big deal? It's a good title. <laughs> Exclusive. I just want to hang out with my little Sorry, uh, no, rock buddies. Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. It's actually called Kena Bridge of Spirits. I mean, the fact that there are movie animators. Hi, I mean, I'm look Mike at Greer. that. I'm the chief creative officer at Ember Lab. And I'm Josh Greer, uh, Mike's brother. I'm the chief operating officer here at the studio. You may have seen our game Kena Bridge of Spirits at the Sony PlayStation 5 event. And today we're really excited to share a little bit more about the project with you. It feels the movement so feels like Horizon Zero Dawn. Well, yeah. Kena Bridge of Spirits is a story-driven action adventure game that combines fast-paced combat with exploration and a really fun, charming companion. I game am actually where really players are going looking around forward to this too. Four creatures that we pile. call the Rot. So you play as Kena. She's a spirit guide who has traveled to this forgotten village and soon discovers that there are many trapped, lingering spirits. Um, and it becomes clear that there are larger forces at play that have sort of corrupted the environment and stopped things from moving on. Well, the main focus of the game actually revolves around helping these trapped spirits. So each kind of level or world that you enter is all focused and kind of themed around the corrupt spirit that's lingering. And to really help these spirits, you ultimately have to get to know what happened to them in their past life. And to do so, you're looking for clues in the environment, you know, facing combat challenges, solving puzzles, but ultimately it all relies on building and growing your team. Yeah, the rut are, are key to like sort of every aspect of gameplay. They can be used in combat to augment abilities. They can be used to manipulate the environment to carry things around for you. Aww. The more rut you have, the stronger you're going to be as a player and the more ability, abilities you get to unlock. The trailer does a lot of things, but one thing we wanted to do was make sure we establish the tone and sort of darker elements that are in the game. And, uh, you know, people see the rot and the cute characters and they immediately fall in love with them, which is great. But the opening cinematic with the meditation and kind of Kana battling these spirits we wanted to, to use to kind of set that darker tone and, and establish these, you know, that the player is going to be, you know, ex exposed to some darker themes in the storytelling. We're targeting a holiday 2020 release and it will be coming to PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and the Epic Games Store. We're really excited for everyone to get their hands on no the game. No steam. And in the meantime, enjoy the rest of the show. That game just looks cool to me. There's... I mean, a couple minutes ago we were talking about game clones or well, whatever. I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching um, the Future Games Show. On. And look out for more great next-gen coverage on GamesRadar.com throughout this week and beyond. And don't forget to check out our sister shows from the Gorilla Collective <laughs> Baby over Porgs. the next few days right here on Twitch. Wait, wait, come on, come on, Nolan. It wouldn't be a game show without that, you know, we got one more thing. Can we do that one more thing moment? You are so right. Wait, are we in this one? No. Oh, well. But hey, Em, would you work with me again? Maybe in some kind of swashbuckling adventure where I play a roguish, charming adventurer? Nah, I think I, you know. I've been there, I've done that. World premiere. Three years ago, Serial Cleaner took you back to 1970s America in a single player stealth action crime story where you played as a professional crime scene cleaner. Getting okay. rid of bodies and the incriminating evidence. 
all while avoiding the police. Now, with over one million owners and releases on all major platforms, we're going to the 90s. does complete our showcase for 2020. Yeah, we hope you've had a great time watching and oh, that you've man. seen something that you can look forward to. We also just want to take a moment to thank our partners for helping put all of this together. But most of all, we want to thank you for watching. I'm Nolan North. And I'm Emily Rose. And this has been, Emily, if you will, the Future Game, Game Show 2020. 2020. They show Assassin's Creed. Did we did we see the, the Assassin's Creed? No. I didn't think so. That's that uh, ninja game. Uh, Ghost Runner. I don't know what that is. Holding a baby in say, the snow. I, I didn't, yeah, I don't remember seeing that either. This is, that was the Unreal. Yeah. Avengers game we haven't seen, Halo like, we haven't Halo. seen. Halo. Spider-Man we hadn't seen. That was Last of Us 2. That's, that's the comic book game. Uh-huh. That's, um, we saw that one. Blanco's we saw. That's that see something, right? The Call of the Sea, maybe? what that is. Oh, that's that stealth game with the line. That's the Avengers game. Which still Did does not impress one? me. There's Assassin's Creed again. What's that? Halo. Yep. That's that one with the That's, it's uh, like they're doing a montage of everything horizon. that was shown this week. Yeah. But we got more tomorrow, but tomorrow's a new week. <laughs> Good lord, I'm tired. Are you tired? I'm tired. Yeah, these uh, E3 shows always, always drain me. <laughs> I need a drink. Okay, anyway. So he said six hours and 30 minutes of game trailers. I'm going to sleep for a week. Yeah, we got next week. We got next week. E3s, yeah. I mean, EA Play is next week. Yep. And there's actually, I've got a schedule I can try and bring up here real quick. Mm. So that's it for today, right? Yep. That's it for today. Oh, need a pillow. Let's see here. So. Yeah, we've got Gorilla Day 2 tomorrow, which I will be covering. And then Monday is the uh, EA Star Wars thing. So we'll see what that game's about. And then there's also a Gorilla on Monday. And then there's nothing major until EA on Thursday. Uh, Steam is doing a thing, but I really don't know too much about that. And then... Let's see, there's a cyberpunk thing on the 25th. And then we jump into July. Uh, Ubisoft's big thing is on the 12th. Mm -hmm. And Xbox is in there too, right? And the Xbox One, I don't have listed, but... And I'm sure Jeff Keighley... I thought it was in July. I, I, yeah, I think it is, but whatever, for whatever reason, it's not on this list. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure Jeff Keighley will do some more stuff as well, but... Well, as long as it's not, like, I don't, 
I have no, I, I just kind of was like yawn with the Unreal 5. It was cool, but like, I'm like, game? I want to see about a game. Engines are cool, but like it was 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> game engine, I'm not a developer. Actually, uh, Forgester, Baldur's Gate 3 was shown this morning. There's two new things on their YouTube channel, and they announced a new uh, gameplay stream that they're going to do for Baldur's Gate 3. I'm sorry, who? For Gorilla? For Baldur's, Gate, Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, on Baldur's Gate's web uh, YouTube channel. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. I was going to say, well, if it was shown on this, they should have it archived, right? Yeah, I can try and bring it up here real quick, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to see it. It's um, fine. I I'm not worried about for me. I was thinking I want to see the, um, you know, I would like to see b uh, Boyfriend Dungeon. So <laughs> I will be watching that. <laughs> yeah, that's buried in here. Oh, wait a minute. Is this Boyfriend Dungeon? No, I think it's something else. It's fine. You'll I've been to, following. Oh, me. right there, right there. That's it. That that's it. That's it. Oh yeah. Let me, let me back it up here. You'd have to. Okay. You'd have to turn on the audio for my stream. Um, You're good. But I'll just let it play here. That's oh, okay. That's not boyfriend dungeon right there. No, it's after this. Oh, is it? Okay. But no, I really liked the uh, the format of the show that we just watched. I thought it was pretty good. They had some pretty mm -hmm. good, pretty good games they showed. I think I took more notes during this one than the PC gaming conference. I agree. But yeah, Dustborn looked pretty good. Ghost Runner, which was the, like the ninja style game, looked pretty good. We got to see mm -hmm. Call of the Sea again. I I had that one highlighted for myself. I had a star next to that one. Neon Abyss, I did too. Um, so I should actually have you talk about it. For So I'm showing Boyfriend about Dungeon. About what? Oh, Boyfriend Dungeon? So for those who don't know, what, what is this game? It's uh, by a little indie studio, Kitbox Games. Um, it is a dating sim dungeon crawler. So... Do I need to explain what a dating sim is? <laughs> it's a video game, like, you know, like, um, Dream Daddies was a dating sim, essentially. Um, yep, that was done by, um, I'm trying to remember which famous YouTuber. Um, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I mean, Game Grumps or did Game a lot Grumps, of, yeah. did a lot of stuff with it. Um, so, and your weapon is like a, is a, is a person. Um, I, I, I can't remember if they turn into a weapon or if they are, when you're not fighting, it turns back into a person. I can't remember, but, um, each weapon is a different person and you just kind of decide which one you want. Um, and then you take them and you go run around and fight you know, the dungeon crawler bit. Mm -hmm. um, this part is very dating sim-ish. And then when you do the dungeon crawler, it's closer to more like a 16-bit E. Not exactly, but, you know. Um, so I don't really know how to explain any better than that. It's, um, yeah, that's what you got. So I like both of those games. So putting them together to me was just like, um, kind of like the Oreo cookie there. <laughs> so it's not um, been done before, I don't think. Uh, uh. So I, um, the art style is really cool. Um, they keep adding more characters, so it, you you should be able to find something that you like. There are heterosexual, um, you know, um, non-binary people. You know, just whatever floats your boats in there um i feel like there's even like a non-human type too in there i think maybe and each one's a different weapon so mm. 
you kind of have to make a decision of what kind of a weapon you need for whatever situation. And then you're dealing with like the whole dating sim thing. So I'm super excited, but they've been, this game has had demos or has been presented at PAX for, I swear it's been three years at least. Um, and it's not out yet. <laughs> So that's it. If you like Dream Daddies, you might want to check it out just to see if maybe you'd like it. Were there any, any other games from uh, the future show that you were kind of interested in? Other than the couple that I mentioned, um, 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 well, I mean, I've already talked about Disintegration, so I do want to try and play that one, I think. Mm -hmm. What I got to see before about it was good. Um, I want to see, like I said, the I think the ratings so far that I've seen are kind of kind of above average. Um, I Again, I think I've said before, I kind of cut multiplayer e games some slack because they're never really good out the door they almost always need time to figure out what they're doing so um kina obviously we both talked about that one from the sony show i'm yep. interested in that one too it does have a horizon zero dawn ish feel to it and i loved that game so mm -hmm. um yeah it's like horizon meets uh pikmin mm -hmm. um What's the other one? Um, that Liberated looked cool. I do really kind of get intrigued by comic book art style games. I don't really know why, because I wasn't a huge comic book reader when I was younger, but it's just different, so therefore I like it. Um, mm -hmm. The Sherlock Holmes one I'm intrigued by too, but I need to see more. A lot of these I'm kind of like, oh, that looks cool, but I need to see more. Yeah. I was going to say earlier that there's actually a fair amount of Sherlock games out there, and I know it was mentioned that this developer had done some of them, but I've never played any of them, but I know that there's definitely a fan base out there for them. But, mm -hmm. yeah, this one's Sherlock Holmes, like really young, 20-ish something, they said. What was the one, and I think I lost it. I'd call to the sea. Was that the one? The one that was kind of like that... Um, a puzzler 1920s game oh yeah what was that one called? was that the was that waking no i don't think skip to this vod here i'm not sure it. if i missed it or not writing I, it down so i made like a list of all the games we'd see and i know i missed a few there at the end yeah um, i know what you're talking about because we've seen it twice now it's not the remothered one. It was the other one. But it reminded me of what are those games where you have to sit there and find the thing in the picture and then there's a and then there's um You mean like a hidden a object story? game? Story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um it it kind of I don't know why it gave me that kind of feel other than it was a woman and she's trying to find right she's trying to find out what happened to her husband you know that's the one i'm talking about mm -hmm. i can't remember what that one was called um it wasn't the call to the sea, call of the sea was it maybe it was let me look um yes yes it was the call to see. Okay, that's yep. why I had it start. Um, other than that, I mean, there were others that were interesting, but I kind of need just a little bit more. I needed a little bit more information to find out whether or not it. Yeah. How about you? Um, what did you have highlighted for yourself there? Oh, Dustborn did look cool. Yeah. Dreamfall Chronicles 
is like anybody who likes that genre of game. Um, so I'm always intri I'm intrigued whenever another developer that makes some game that I thought was awesome makes another one. So, mm -hmm. okay, I'm sorry. Continue. No, like I said, uh, Dustborn, Ghost Rider, Call of the Sea, uh, Cap uh, The Captain is Dead, which we which was the FTL like game. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a couple of those today. So that one was fun. There was uh, that other one, and I don't know if I can read my own writing on this. It was like G Y G N I. I wrote that down, and now I'm forgetting exactly which game that was. No, it's Signy, the retro shooter. Oh. Let me see here. C Y G N I, right? That was the one that was like Galaga. Oh yeah, 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 Galaga. <laughs> Make a note on that. <laughs> For y'all who aren't old timers. <laughs> um. Yeah, I have that one highlighted because my husband is all about those games, and so I can't get him to play a modern console game to save my life. Um, so I was like, hmm, I wonder if that one's basic enough for him to be willing to play it. Uh, he's a huge Spider-Man fan. My daughter and I played it. <laughs> he didn't play it at all. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, as I'm going through the VOD again, we just ran across uh, Outriders again, and there, there's definitely a lot of these Destiny-style clones that are coming out. It's going to be interesting to see if any of them actually take off. Outriders, though, just feels a little bit different. A, the story... Okay, now, again, I'm saying the story looks like it's better than Destiny's, but I've got to be frank with you, Destiny's story didn't look as bad as it was. Mm when you saw the trailers. Um, so I kind of got my fingers crossed there. Um, um, so we'll see. It's just, it's hard. Destiny almost, even though it's not, it's had some rough patches here, especially this year, or Destiny 2. Mm -hmm. um, it still sucks the air out of the room, much like Overwatch, just not as efficiently as Overwatch does. There's not a lot of room for other games, being that Destiny is on the field. Yeah, especially um, since they went free to play, and then they just had the event what last week, where they announced the next three expansions. And yep, yep, and I'm. I'm excited about it. The game is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely worth a free to play. And if people haven't played Destiny 2, you should. Um, and the amount of content that's in it that is free is amazing. Um, but I mean, you also have the division, which doesn't have as much name recognition as uh, Destiny, but it seems to be doing fine. Um, and then you have Borderlands 3 which, again, is also doing fine. I don't know how much more room there is. I'm hoping that Outriders is more like Mass Effect than Destiny. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That is my secret hope. Because if it tries to be Destiny, I don't know. I don't think there's any more room at the end for another... I mean, look at Anthem. So I, I don't think there's any more room at the end for another destiny type game but i don't know I'm, yeah i mean i'm not a developer i know according to the last bioware blog they said that they're oh, still working on anthem and they got like 30 people on it and stuff but i don't know if that game's gonna come back that game has to come back I, it, i've said it multiple times i know they wanted to be different but again referencing what i just said about destiny Mm -hmm. there's no more i it just it doesn't feel like and correct me it, i mean if you disagree please let me know but it just doesn't feel like there's any more like the market is like cornered i don't know where they're going to be able to carve out another section of that market that isn't already somewhat engaged with some product in it already um it, regardless if the flying is core cool whatever they need to come back 
I swear, and shift to story or shift to something else. I just, because just trying to go for those, you know, shooter people. And then Gears of War actually, I don't think did horrible either. And then you've got the tactics game that's coming out. Gears of War was a good game. Yep. Um, so, so that's the third person shooter, but it's, you know, um, but it was an open world. So um, it was more of a traditional, you know, third person shooter. I just, I really wish they would focus on some story because I didn't even finish the story, y'all. And I'm a huge Bioware fan. That's the first Bioware game that I haven't finished. And I deleted it off my computer. (laughs) (laughs) So before I even got halfway through the story. So, um, and they just left all those people on the table. That was, that was customers that got left on the table, which they thought, you know, well, that's okay. We'll be okay. No, you weren't. Yeah, so, I, just, I, I just know that we've had a lot of conversations about Anthem, and I think, I mean, I don't know what you feel about this, but I had assumed that they were already working on this Anthem revamp, and they were probably six months in already, maybe mm-hmm. even more than that. But mm-hmm. then they came out with that blog, and they're like, all right, we got 30 people, and they're basically just starting on it. I'm like, what? You're just now starting on this? And it's only 30 I mean, people. So mm-hmm. I'm like, ooh, boy. So I guess my first thought, though, and I'm selfish, I'll, I'll admit it, is I'm like, my thought was good because I want my Dragon Age 4 first. Mm-hmm. And if you all can't do two games at the same time, I, you made me wait on Dragon Age 4 for Anthem. I ain't waiting for Dragon Age 4 no more for Anthem. I I gave you your time. Now you get my game out now. And so I hope that's the reason mm-hmm. is that they decided to not screw over the story people who didn't want no anthem. And so now they're actually, and they rebooted it. <laughs> and Mike Landlaw left because they put it on the back burner, which was, there were two like, you know, senior people that Dragon Age folks love, Mark Dara and Mike Laidlaw. And Mike Laidlaw left. Oh, and uh, David Gator left too because they put it on the back burner. The three, three of the three of the pillars of Dragon Age for the last Dragon Age 2 and 3 left because they put the game on the back burner for Anthem. I mean, think about that for a second. So they can't, they can't, they cannot put Dragon Age 4, um, they can't slow that game down anymore because people aren't going to put up with it. And that's why when they started talking about, ooh, remaster of Mass Effect, I'm like, oh, come on now. Yeah. So who's working on that? I hope to God it's not Bioware. Because <laughs> Edmonton's got to be full production on Dragon Age 4, right? They are. And Plus, they were helping with Anthem. I imagine they're still helping to an extent with Anthem, at the very least. I know I know. Uh, uh, Austin is lead. Makes sense. They're the multiplayer people, so mm-hmm. they should be. But, um, and, uh, but they were still, uh, you know, Edmonton was still making, helping with some decisions and you know, whatever. And then we have the Mass Effect that's like in basically pre pre production, the next Mass Effect game. Yep. So there's no more room at the end at Bioware unless they're going to get a new studio or unless they're trying, unless EA is going to do a pull a Sony and pull in other studios. Um, that has worked and not worked. They did that with the animation for. Anybody? Andromeda? (laughs) That went well, didn't it? So, not that other studios can't do it, but they, you know, didn't coordinate well enough, and then it was kind of a hot mess. So, I don't know. 
But anyway, I got us off topic. Outriders, <laughs> please be, please be more like Mass Effect than Destiny. There's, the, the, we need more Mass Effect D. Oh, I totally agree with that. Than Destiny games, even though Destiny is gorgeous, the gunplay is one of the best on the market right now. Um, not trying to poo on Destiny, but we need more narrative games thank you very much anyway and for those of you wasteland 3 like i said i did get to play that very pretty game graphics were amazing um did i re did the, the do i remember i mean i gotta if i could dig up the notes i could put it up but um uh I got to talk to the developer too, and I it was right <laughs> as the last video game convention, y'all, before COVID nineteen mm -hmm. hit. They actually cleaned every single station. Now, again, if you guys haven't ever been to a video game, that's the first time I have ever seen the handrails on escalators cleaned, ever. Um, it was happening constantly, hmm. and um, and gloves being worn by devs at testing stations and the computers were wiped down after every single person and we were all asked to wash our hands with hand sanitizers before and after using them i have never seen that and i've been going to video game uh conventions like pax for six years so um just mind-blowing um, I'm shocked that I didn't get sick because Boston had a huge outbreak a week after I came back. <laughs> Started hitting the news that they had this huge outbreak in Boston. So. But anyway, Wasteland 3 looked cool. If you like RTS games, you should probably go play it. It looked cool. Uh, Forcer in chat was asking, Bioware Vancouver, they got shut down, right? They are. There's only two Bioware studios now. It's mm -hmm. Austin and Edmonton. That's it. Yep. The last one was Montreal. Montreal got closed because of Andromeda. And all those people got moved over to um, um, Battlefront. Battlefront or... Um, Jade Studio. I'm the one that's doing a, the new Star Wars game. Um, which is the one who did? Is it? Are they? Is that them? Uh, they were the ones who did the the campaign for Battlefront, right? Jade Jade Reman's old studio. I can look it up because it was on the announcement for this new Star Wars game. It was okay. Um, I'll have to look at it. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it here real quick. You have an M, right? Motive. Yes. Yes. Yep. Cool. Oh, well, that's good for them. Um, the uh, Ian, what's his face, was on Andromeda as like the lead. What a. Uh, designer graphic designer or whatever and then he got moved over to that so i think that's what he's working on um, mike gamble is back on mass effect right so anyway yeah he posted something the other day i'm trying to remember what the heck it was or maybe it the was that, or maybe <laughs> that it was a it was that he was on this new star wars game um is he let me look that up real quick I thought he was working on the Mass Effect. He was talking about how it's been the big, like what the most consistent game or something of his life. I don't know something. Um, that's an EA studio. Okay, I'm, I'm, I must be thinking of a uh, different uh, dev. Yeah, he he says uh, he's a project director at Bioware on unannounced mm -hmm. project. Mm-hmm. 
And some tweet that he put out before was basically if you knew that he has worked on, he worked on Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, and then he worked on Andromeda, and then he said something basically like, I'm back to my home or something like mm. that, is what he said. So we were all like, oh, he's on the Mass Effect, new Mass Effect team. So um, anyway. Yeah. I always like having you on because we can talk about this stuff all day. Uh, we could. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, we'll probably wrap this up. Um, any final questions, chat at all, or any final any final things, Elise? Think I don't of? think so. I, I need a breather. I, this is a video game. I love seeing trailers and whatever else, but man, this multiple week stuff. I don't they keep having it in the middle of the day. I have to actually work. <laughs> I don't know about other people. Yeah. It's like but, the Star Wars yeah. thing on Monday is at like 9 or 10 in the morning or something like that. It's like, why? Yeah. What, what are you guys doing? I don't know. I'm going to attempt to work. <clears throat> and <laughs> watch it. <laughs> I'm going to try. Um, in the old days, they would like, it'd be okay if they did it at like lunch, mm -hmm. you know, then I could schedule my lunch around it and it would be funny because people would be in the chat, um, especially for like, you know, like Bioware, the video game studio would do some stream for the week, right? It would be at like lunch and we'd like have, but be, ha ha. Okay. It's my lunch break. Y'all better get on it. Um, and they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. But now it's like um, with these like pressers, you like, I understand you guys are trying to do it during your work day, but I mean, there's not that many game journalists anymore. If you haven't taken a look around, mm. most of us that are covering this are content creators who have another job. Can't all be Dr. Lupo. Yep. Which, by the way, I got killed by Dr. Lupo, by the way, in a crucible match. <laughs> like, I came around the corner and I was done. <laughs> My claim to fame in it then. Um, uh, but I don't understand this, but making it like, what is it, like a month and a half almost? If you put it all like days worth together, mm -hmm. maybe a month's worth of these things, I just my personal opinion is it's too many too long but yeah and there's all these new ones that popped up this year mm -hmm. and i understand i mean everybody has a discord right for their game now yep <laughs> i mean there has to be like a critical mass of how many discords people can actually be in and still be human beings um so i just i i don't know when you individualize everything, then it means maybe that people are going to start picking and choosing what they're willing to dedicate time for. But, you know, I guess they won't know until they try it to see how it works. So we'll see. But I do love the whole being, you know, the digital factor of it. That that has been really nice. And like today with the wanting people to co-stream, I thought that was really nice and make it you know facilitating that for those of you who are streamers i don't really consider myself that you just kidly just kind of brings me along on that <laughs> um that was really nice that kind of open yes we want you to co-stream so i think that's a nice move to be made yep and i i think the developers have discovered that generally speaking the co-stream can potentially pick up more viewers than just them doing it alone. Mm -hmm. so, I agree. Because streamers don't want to stop their stream to watch something. So, like, if Sony would have come out and said, no one is allowed to co-stream this, then they would have not hit the milestone numbers that they, that they hit the other day. Right. Yeah, I agree. And plus, I mean, you have your own community. You're bringing your community. Some right. of your community might not have watched it in the first place. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're bringing potential eyes and ears to the platform that they couldn't have gotten maybe on their own. So that's really, you, you're facilitating their marketing. Smart business move. Um, 
I just wonder what has happened to for them to finally get with that. That's not news. I'm not a social media marketer person, but I know this. So um, I just, I wonder just from a logical perspective, what analytics finally changed to make them go, yeah, yeah. Or is it COVID-19 that did it? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I think uh, I think everybody will uh, wrap things up right there. We'll be at this. Uh, well, I'll be at this again tomorrow with the uh, Gorilla Collective day two, and after that, maybe we'll uh, stream something else for the first time in like a week. So, oh, that'll be fun. I will. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated on what the plan is, and then yeah, like we were talking, there's the. Uh, EA Star Wars thing on Monday, so we'll be covering that, and another Gorilla Collective on Monday, and then we'll keep an eye open for the actual EA thing that they're doing, and then Ubisoft and Microsoft and any other ones that pop up. So, yeah. Once again, Elise, thanks for uh, coming out for this. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's Absolutely. Well. Everybody in chat, thank you all so much for watching. I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of your day, your evening, wherever you are in the world. We'll see you guys tomorrow. So have a good night, and we'll see you then. Bye.